down to the dent. It's Travis. So, I'm putting together a glove today. And I'm not brazing, I am soldering because this is a, uh, a Becker clone, how, uh, how it appears today. And it's because of all the schmutz and detailing that goes on these things. Here's my Becker clone here. You're not even going to, by the time I'm done, you're not even going to see these solder seams. They're all pretty much covered in schmutz and blackened and all that. So for intensive purposes, and because I'm also not using my uh, P210 replicas, because these only go for my part ones, and maybe a part two gear shift here and there. Um, but, huh. and someone with, so sorry about your penis, dude. So sorry about your penis. Man with a small penis just drove by really fast. In any event, uh, so I thought it was interesting to take a break. I haven't done some real intensive soldering in a while, some real authentic soldering. And uh, it really, you know, it's, it's good. Nice tight little seams. Um, the scorching is even, uh, is even appropriate. I mean, what you're basically looking at is this is the, uh, you know, the, the part one kind of procedure on the, uh, on the copper, on the type M copper pipe. Uh, I would go in there and do a little bit more pickup work if I was doing this as a part one, but you can already see all these really telltale signs of, of multi-layer hues, and I would go in with a little bit more black and all that, and I've even got the black scorch that you can see in a lot of the shots for part two um, in certain angles. So, uh, and that really has to do with a couple things, namely uh, the type of head that you're using on your torch, um, the kind of gas you're using, I mean, it's just propane, and the kind of solder, and a couple other things that I won't get into uh, and how I bring this to fruition. But for all intents and purposes, this is, you know, part of the process. So I've got a really nice part one uh, weathering and uh, the index is on there. And I'm not using, as I said, the P210s, but I am using my uh, Shakespeare's. And uh, these are the aged Shakespeare's. So uh, they just tend to look really nice. Haven't cut the blade yet, clearly. But uh, there you go. Not too shabby, you know. Um, I forgive myself here and there. Missed a little spot uh, on the side, but it's okay if it's not really quite uniform. It overall, again, it picks up the, you know, the, uh, the screen authentic look, and this is all going to be blackened out anyway. So when you get a seam that tight, you don't want to muck with it too much. And we've got the nice solder spill in the front, so we're good, and it's got that authentic coloring, um, even though we're going to totally cover this up and make it look like this bad boy next to it. But uh, there you go. Pre -bay, uh, blade break and um, it's looking pretty good. Uh, the blade itself is pre shaped, it's already blunted, and we're just going to continue on. And uh, the really nice thing about these final gloves I'm doing is that uh, the rivets are solid brass. They are so fucking rare, and I got hundreds of them. These are real brass, they're going to age like real brass. They're not the faux ones, and uh, they're the uh, appropriate size. And um, yeah, we're looking good. So onward and upward. Do a little quick demo. Let's see how this. Let's put it on. Let's be geeky, shall we? Uh, now remember, I can't really wear this because my hand is bigger. I can only kind of faux wear it. But there you go, guys. Not too shabby, huh? Not too shabby. It all comes out in the wash, doesn't it? So let's uh, continue on and uh, see where this takes us. So I always said when I started this process, I vowed to be completely transparent. That little spot that I missed was bugging me, if not for anything more than the, uh, the bonding. So I gave it a little bit more solder right there, which actually adds to the screen accurate appearance, if you want to know the truth. So now the sucker is, uh, the sucker is not going anywhere, and it looks great. So let's uh, see what happens next. I really can't get a break with the noise around here this week. So I'm going to go ahead and start aging this up a little bit and see if we can't start matching it to that, which is uh, my base part one, um, excuse me, my uh, DESA Becker clone, my base aged piece. I'm going to go ahead and approximate. And like I said, you know, we're, you know, I mean, my Becker clone has been through the mill. 
Uh, so you have all this nice spot weathering, which really matches up here. Um, this was done very quickly, and it's a little bit more uniform, but really if I can, you know, if I can get an approximate bead on this, I will. I'm not going to kill myself. This happens with a lot of wear and tear, so by the time Congroy actually gets this, this is glove I'm working on right here, um, and keeps this lying around and handles it, it's going to age naturally. This is a year and a half, almost two years old now. So um, it, the reason it looks as good as it does is because after I hit it with the weathering like this, all this, let's call it um, speckling, cheetah spotting, whatever you want to call it, that happens um, from just, you know, natural age and, uh, and handling and stuff. So, um, you know, it's, it's always good to take these things with a grain of salt um, when you're building and looking at them. So let's see what we got. And okay, um, you know, I put the tip here for effect, so let's take the tip off and show you what we just did, which was to kind of just match the... Um, now, I want you to keep in mind also, this part one base piece was my original Becker clone temps, which, if you recall, if you know me, uh, if you follow me, the Becker clone templates were changed when I did the 2.0 Ultimate Edition. So this is much closer, and thus the bend is actually much closer than how it should be. But for all intents and purposes, I'm just showing off the weathering. So this is Congroy's glove. That I just did, that you just saw previous, and I actually managed to get the speckling to a pretty nice match. Um, it looks really nice. The lighting here is not the best, so let's see if we can get a better lighting setup. There you go. There you go, Congroy. Pretty damn nice. Um, I'm really happy with it. Uh, your Becker clone, as it appears today, index, and your oils from your hands will, you know, bring this this luster up even more. I'm not going to muck with it too much. You can leave it to yourself to handle it and put as much oil and sheen as you want on the surface. I'll give it a little rub down before I go, but I'm going to be handling this thing a lot more as I go ahead <clears throat> and now build the rest, uh, or rather age the rest of your finger pieces, which you know is a pretty amazing process um, to behold. Uh, yeah, so we're going to get that going and uh, hopefully we'll rock on. But there you go. Your index is done. Let's put that aside. In fact, let's put your index over on the done pile. Weathering finished and the tip will be, all the tips are weathered last, but I put them all together uh, while I'm building this. So uh, there you go, buddy. We'll catch you in a bit.